Hello and welcome back to the channel, my name is Crashy, and today I wanted to do a topic video just discussing my expectations, but also what I think that you should be expecting as a player getting into Pokemon Unite. Now, the reason why I wanted to do this, and again, I think it's it's kind of hard for me to put myself in this position, but I'm really trying to, is that there are going to be a lot of people, this specific game, that this will be their first MOBA, you've never played a MOBA before, you just simply don't know what to expect, and it's going to be a new world, it's going to be a learning experience, but I do think that Pokemon Unite actually has a pretty nice transition into it the learning curve it's there there's some depth to this game but it's not super steep but i want to talk about what i'm expecting and what i think that you should be expecting out of pokemon unite so first and foremost let's go ahead and talk about the business model of this game because i think like even if you are considering getting into it this is probably one of the first things you're curious about it's a free-to-play game that does not require the like nintendo service nintendo subscription i don't even know what it's called <laughs> this is how new to even owning a switch i am so whatever the paid like online service for Nintendo is you don't even need that and I think that that's a really really big thing for this game because it's really gonna open the door for a lot of players to get in and try the game out to see if they like it so first and foremost you just get on the game you download it you're gonna play it you're gonna get uh, like a character for free if you play it in the first month you're gonna get Zara Aura for free and then after you finish the tutorial if I remember correctly you get a starter Pokemon so there's uh, a bunch of different roles in the game essentially there are all all-rounders, attackers, defenders, speedsters, and supporter. And when you finish the tutorial, you're going to be able to pick um, one character from that category. I forget the actual list of them. I know like Pikachu and Charizard is one of them. Eldegoss is one. Snorlax is one. And I kind of forget what speedster they give you. Oh, Talonflame, I think, if I remember correctly. So you get to pick one of those Pokemon just to unlock. It's like free money. You get to have them. And yeah, so that's, that's where you start. So you get in the game. You're going to get a couple characters for free, essentially, and then you get to start playing. Now, there are a few different game modes. I'm not going to touch on that, but that's kind of cool because although I'll probably just be focusing on, like, the main game mode, there's, like, 3v3 mode and I think, like, a 4v4 mode as well. So you get to kind of, like, find out, like, what your flavor is for this game specifically. But in terms of what you can expect, you can expect that it's going to have a, a kind of free-to-play model to it. Obviously, it is a free-to-play game. And what that means is that there's going to be a lot of cosmetics and, you know, you're going to be able to pay and buy those cosmetics if you want to, or you're going to play for free. Now, for me personally, I always do like a good mix. I expect that they're going to, you know, they're going to have that battle pass in there. I know there is a free version of the battle pass and then like a premium version of the battle pass. It'll probably be close to $10 because that's about what it is for every battle pass in every game, $10 USD. And yeah, it's going to have some rewards. They do have this kind of like triple currency system and I'm not exactly sure what, like where it falls and what it is, but obviously one will be like a free to play currency. One is going to be more of like a, like a gem type of currency and then that'll be used for specific things. I think if I remember correctly, I'm, I'm kind of basing a lot of this off of just what I've seen and when I played the Japanese beta and then you'll have your paid currency. So if you have your paid currency, obviously you can spend that by like skins, cosmetics, um, different Pokemon to use. If you have a free currency, it's going to take a lot more naturally, and you'll be able to probably do the same thing. Maybe not skins, we'll have to wait and see, but you'll be able to buy champions out of it or characters, uh, Pokemon to use. And then this like gem or like badge kind of currency, I really don't know what it is specifically. That's what you're going to use to upgrade your items, which is the perfect segue to talk about held items. Now, I'm pretty sure it's when you level up. Sorry, I don't have all the information, you know, it's just so much is just kind of spotty and out there and I don't really remember everything from beta, but I'm pretty sure when you level up, that's how you're going to be able to unlock some of the battle items. Um, if that's not accurate, then you'll just be unlocking them with the currency that you get. But the held items are going to be a whole bunch of different items. Now, I'm going to I'm gonna quickly like show like a list of them. I'll pop it up here on screen. There's like the AOS cookie, assault vest, attack weight, buddy barrier, energy amplifier, XP share, so on and so forth. Now, these items on your actual Pokemon itself, you will have three slots that you can pick items for. This is 
the MOBA aspect of like building a, a build and like having like a kit with your character, like a full encompassing build for your character. But this is not going to be the, the kind of like more hardcore in depth part of the, of, you know, the normal MOBA genre where you have to build that in game. You are going to buy these items and upgrade these items with that, you know, that free currency, whatever it is, that kind of like gem thing. And you're going to actually put these on your characters before you get into game. So, you know, if you've seen some of my last videos where I talked about making a build, that's essentially what I'm doing. So like one, you know, a build that I'm looking forward to is like Floatstone, Muscle Band, and Attack Weight. And I'm going to try to rank those up and put it on Speedsters and play. So when you're in the game, you're just going to be playing a lot of the beginning and just leveling up and unlocking different things, like moving through that free battle pass and, and you know, leveling up your actual account level. But you're also going to be like working towards some of these goals, and, and that's the expectation that you should have. You should know and be aware of these items, because essentially you're going to want to have a good understanding of the game, or at least enough understanding of the game, to be able to pick appropriate items to go with whatever characters you like to play. Um, as for the different types of characters, again, you know, you have the all-arounders. The all-arounders are like your, they're not quite tanks, but they're not quite like damage dealers. They're right in the middle. They're bruisers, your brawlers. You're mostly going to be melee in your face, uh, fighting in the front line. You have your attackers. These are your, your backliners. They sit behind the front line. You have like, it's essentially if you're familiar with other MOBAs, it's like your 80 carries and your mages. You're going to have the Pikachus, the Cinderace, the Cramorant, the Ninetales, and these are going to be doing the damage for the team. Then you have the defenders. This is going to be your tanks, the hard front line, the people that really want to get in and be disruptive. That's Snorlax, Slowbro, and Crustle, and then eventually Blastoise will come out as well. You have the speedsters. Speedsters are your assassins. They're mostly melee i think they're all melee for now that could change in the future um if you know they come out with a cool design but they're going to be mostly melee they're going to be coming out of the jungle maybe in lane but they're going to be the ones that are you know doing really high burst maybe have some good mobility but they don't really have a lot of survivability but they're there for damage with the attackers just in a different way and then you have your supporters which are you know essentially your support characters people that assist the team through utility and heals and different things like that it's a very necessary role so the reason why I bring this up in terms of expectations is that that is what you need to know getting into the game. What kind of player do you want to be? Or do you want to be someone really flexible and play all different kinds of roles? So definitely something to look for when you're you're talking about, you know, what you want to do in the game. How do you want to engage in the game? And then that'll also be influenced by your different items, too, because certain characters will require certain types of items. As far as gameplay goes, you know, there's no real easy way to tell you what to expect from a MOBA. Just know that it's all a battle of, you know, trying to be ahead, trying to make sure that you have more experience than the others, than the other team, that you're getting more energy, you're scoring more goals, and ultimately that you're able to, you know, work as a team because it is a team game and, and beat out the other team. But it's going to take some time to really learn the nuance of like the timings of things, knowing what your matchups are. Like if you're a Pikachu standing across from Ninetales, who wins that fight? I'm going to tell you honestly, I don't know yet. We don't really know or I'm, I don't personally know yet. So learning the matchups, learning the the game sense, the awareness to know when people are off the map and maybe you need to be careful because they could be ganking you. Knowing what a gank is when somebody attacks like out of the jungle or surprise attacks, knowing the importance of the jungle role or you know, us finding out as a community of players, finding out what the meta is. So that's kind of what I'm expecting. I think that the the kind of like out of game expectation that I have for this game is that it being free to play on Switch and mobile, having a really strong IP from, you know, Pokemon and being a MOBA, which is a very, very popular genre. I see very big things for this game. I think it's going to be around for a long time. I think that that free to play model is all about inclusivity and just getting people in the door. They're going to be able to develop Pokemon all the time as much as they want to put them out and release them which means that they can continue their development because they're going to be making money they're going to be selling battle passes on seasons probably they're going to be making cosmetics you can buy your cosmetics i mean it's just going to be this self-recycling snowballing effect of a game that is all built for success and i'm really looking forward to it because you know when you play a game you want it to be good you want it to be successful you want the developers to make money and be able to continue that development and put out better content and when they snowball and when they you know when they start to make all that money and they they are doing the right things and they can continue to do the right things so really looking forward to that i think um like i said just the accessibility alone is is pretty crazy there's a lot of people that play on switch 
uh, that might even be looking for a game. A lot of mobile players that might be looking for a game. So all in all, I hope you enjoyed this little discussion about you know, what you can expect from Pokemon Unite, what you can expect going into your first MOBA, what you should be looking to kind of figure out for yourself, which again, I will reiterate, you know, find that style of play that you like. I, I love jungle. I, I come from other MOBAs. I love that jungle role. The person that influences the game kind of like on his own by, you know, appearing out of the jungle, going through and farming my own self and then coming out to help. And I'll be doing that on probably a couple different types of characters. All rounders and speedsters are what I'm looking at, but find what works for you and explore it because it's free and you can. So thank you so much for spending your time with me here on the channel. I definitely do appreciate it. If you enjoyed this type of content, let me know in the comment section down below or like the video and subscribe. And uh, yeah, feel free to ask me anything. If you want me to make a certain type of video, feel free to ask and I'll see what I can do. As always, be sure to be kind to one another. Tell someone that you love them and I'll see you on the next video.